Oh, good. Oh, cool. And we're live. <laughs> Great. Hello. Awesome. So um, we're going to give people a minute or two to join. I know sometimes there's a lag getting in. So um, we can just wait a minute and we'll have all of our guests join us. It looks like they're coming in. Um, in the meantime, if you guys want to pop in the chat and just let us know where you're joining from, we're always interested to see who the farthest is here in the webinar. Oh, that should not pop up. Awesome. So we have an Oakland, California. Steven from Oakland. Yes. Thanks for being here. So we have a London. <laughs> There's yeah. always an international, which we love. Is that London, Canada or London? England? Oh, I made the assumption. London, <laughs> London Ontario. Miami. I just learned about London, Ontario. So Ray, what, which London are you coming from? It's probably not worth asking. It's probably UK. <laughs> London, London, Texas. Yep, call it UK. Awesome. Welcome. Miami. I used to live in Miami. When did you live? You lived in, you lived in Miami, Jose? Yeah, in That's the awesome. early nineties. <laughs> early nineties. Wow, sweet. Awesome. Well, um, it looks like it's slowing down right now for joining, so I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to Sports Tech Central is your startup ready. I'm Natalie Connors. I'm a part of the Sports Tech marketing team. Um, today's episode is just a discussion around our accelerator, the application pro uh, process, all of our partners and you know the relationship we have with them, how we choose our company. And then the most important part is um, we want this to be very engaging to you. Feel free to ask whatever you want. Um, in our chat or in the Q&A. And we want to make this, you know, Q&A for you all and any questions that you might have. So um, always feel free to chime in. We will get to all of them um, and we look forward to the session. So today I'm super happy to have Jose and Jeffrey with me here. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hi. And we're, and we're glad to be on the line with you now. Awesome. Yes. Um, so these two are definitely the guides for the job. So I'll give a little background and then Jose and Jeffrey, if you'd like to add anything, um, please feel free. But um, Jose is interesting because he has experience from both sides, um, both startups, investors, you know, all the ins and outs. So he's founded five startups. He's worked as a designer at Google, and he is now our portfolio director here at Boomtown Accelerator. So Jose, thank you so much for joining us. So good to be here. Um, this is Jeffrey. He is our investment director at Comcast Sports Tech. Jeffrey has an extensive background in advanced technologies, um, so he definitely can comment on innovations and um, everything in between. So he has a lot of experience advising startups, and that will definitely give insight as to what we're looking for. He's also worked on a number of deep field experiments with the U.S. government in our Antarctica and loves geeking out over science and tech. So <laughs> welcome, Jeff. Hi. The stories around the world. Oh yeah, you I've you all it. can name a place, and Jeffrey's been and has a, a great story. So oh, sounds good. Um, so I think we should just go ahead and jump in. Um, with the early deadline is July fifteenth here for applications. So let's just start off with what makes a startup a good fit for this program. Yeah, I've got to jump on that uh, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, we're looking for a, a number of factors. Uh, we obviously we we want a strong founding team uh, who's got the uh, the individuals on board to execute on the vision that you're setting forth. So if you're a hardware company, we'd want people that can build hardware. If it's you know B2B SaaS business and somebody who can you know talk to enterprise clients and close deals. Um, uh, on top of that, we want to make sure that your company is at a stage where the product is mature. Um, we care less about the traction and revenue and, and number of customers. We care a lot more about the stage of your product. The purpose, uh, the importance of that is a big benefit of this program is the relationships with our partners, right? And so uh, if somebody like Sky Sports says, we want to do a pilot with you and it's going to take you six months to uh, refine and develop the product in order to execute on that pilot, that's not going to be fun for them. You know, it's not going to be fun for you. You're not going to get anything out of that aspect of the program. So we want to make sure that you are you have a product that's mature enough to execute on on um, on our products. So uh, that's really the main uh, 
requirements as far as stages. And then what we're looking for on top of that is just partner fit. So uh, we've, we have a number of partners and the more partners that your company can have a relationship with or can solve problems for, uh, the more of a chance you have of getting in. Awesome. So yeah, I, I would agree. And can I, can I add to that? Yeah, of course. Um, partner fit really, really is important. It, it's, to, I think one of the amazing uh, benefits with the sports tech program. And the, one of the amazing things that we do here is we get, you know, partners from the, the sports industry, not only to just come in and maybe introduce themselves or do a single lecture or something, but they really join the program as mentors and advisors and, and friends and family. Um, and, uh, you know, having that fit with a partner and being able to really get into an engaged discussion with them, uh, not just selling them on something, but just as, you know, as a, as a friend of, the, of your company is, is an amazing thing. That's the first thing. Secondly, um, to pick up on, on Jose, your first comment on what makes a good fit, which is, which is founders, is absolutely true. We really love awesome, engaged founders who are not afraid to, to ask big questions and to be able to say, you know, if we're pushing on the business model or technology, be able to say, you know, we've got, we've got a bunch of ideas. We've got a bunch of different directions. We've got, you know, we've got fit in all these different directions. And we're excited to, to work with you guys and to take things apart and put them back together. And, you know, founders that are engaged and open to, uh, to ideas. Yeah, I, I love that. I think um, the ones that are the most open are always the most successful coming out of the program. And totally. um, I think it's very obvious to see, you know, which ones took in the learnings, everything. So I always love watching that. I think um, before we keep talking about just generalized partners, I think it would be important to note who those are. I know we'll get into more specific questions Um you know, their involvement in the program and the selections and all of that. But um, I do want everyone to know if you haven't seen them already, they are on our website, but it's the PGA Tour, the WWE, NBC Sports, Sky Sports, Golf Channel, Comcast Spectacor, NASCAR, USE and Snowboard, USA Cycling and USA Swimming. So when we refer to partners, those are who we are talking about, um, and then we'll dive further into their actual overall involvement in the program. So we talk about, you know, sports tech, and that's, you know, a generic term that can encompass so many different types of companies. So Jose and Jeffrey, what types of companies more specifically are you looking for? Yeah, I, I can I can start this one out. Uh, it's it's a great question, and you know. Sports tech is such is such a broad term, and we really love talking about all of the different um, the, the different ways that you can think about sports tech. We we invest and work with companies that are doing everything from fitness wearables and trackers to video compression and analysis and, and broadcast technology to uh, you know sports gambling and uh, and ticket uh, event and venue ticketing and everything. Um, so it's, it's this huge range and it's because we have such a diverse range of partners that are within the sports tech, the Comcast sports tech realm, um, we can work and provide an amazing value for all sorts of different. So just to go over it more, more precisely, um, our, our eight investment areas, um, which are on ComcastSportsTech.com, it's in the menu item, it's the investment areas, are fan and player engagement, um, athlete and player performance, uh, media and entertainment, venue and event innovation, uh, team and coach success, business of sports, fantasy sports and betting, and and finally esports. So we're pretty confident that no matter what you're working on, if you're like this could be sports tech, we might be able to find an interesting fit, and at very least have a really interesting discussion uh, about how how things come together. What do, what do you think, Jose? Any any good uh, good examples? I think that's fantastic. I think the um... <laughs> The additional uh, part to that would be, uh, or the caveat rather, is if you are a company that you're not sure if you are sports tech or not, uh, we are a lot more interested in a company that is uh, that can have a sports tech app application, right? Who can actually solve a problem to our sports tech partners, uh, or or uh, within one of our verticals um, that might not be a sports tech company. So, for example, it might be a fintech company that's you know maybe like processing payments. Uh, but can solve uh, some of the problems around venue innovation or processing a uh, large number of people through, you know, a, a large stadium. 
um, as opposed to uh, a sports tech company that doesn't solve problems within our verticals or, or doesn't quite fit up with our partners. So um, you don't need to be a sports tech company, but what we're looking for are companies that have sports tech applications uh, or applicability within the sports tech world. And I'm sure we can all agree we hear that question all the time, you know, should I apply, can I fit, you know, into one of those verticals and the answer is almost always yes. You know, there, there are plenty of ways that we can make sure that it is applicable to sports yeah. tech and to our partners, so we definitely encourage everyone to apply. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a great question to keep on asking, and I think a great thing to think about innovating in. I mean, we're, we're innovating. We're all about new ideas here. So if there's, that's what we want to bring forward is new ideas that could be sports tech. Awesome. So let's talk about the application process with the deadline coming up on July 15th, which you all will hear me say plenty of times this uh, webinar. Um, what are some tips, some general tips for filling out those applications and, and really getting noticed? I think for me, uh, it, it makes our lives easier when uh, we can be less creative in interpreting your application from the point of view of uh, what partners can work with you. Uh, so we're a big part of, of, uh, of this program is identifying where there could be synergies or, or ways that we can connect you with our partners during the program, uh, which it does mean there are times when we, we have amazing companies that apply, but there isn't a fit with, you know, any of our partners and, and we have to, to pass on you. Uh, on the other on the other side of things, if if uh, a company does get into our program, there's not really a question of whether or not there's interest from our partners. Like that's that's a really important part uh, of the process. Um, and uh, so if you can you know, do some thinking around how you could integrate with some of the new uh, efforts that perhaps USA Swimming is uh, promoting on some of their sites or that any press uh, announcement that's been made by, let's say, NASCAR or something, you say, OK, wow, this, this new uh, effort that they're going after, I think we could really fit behind that. And even just creative ways that you might work with any of our other partners, that really helps us um, just think more broadly about your company, because we are going to be spending time above and beyond filling those gaps. So even if you don't do that, we will be doing it. But it'd be, you know, we, we want to make sure you get the best chance uh, at being considered for our program. And so if you do some of that thinking, uh, it kind of minimizes the chance that we overlook something. Yeah, and I think an exciting part that comes out of that is when companies say, oh, hey, I think I could work with this partner and here's how my tech would, you know, fit into their organization. And then the exciting ones are the ones where it's like, well, hold on, I never thought I had the ability to work with this partner and here I am solving a pain point. So do one of you kind of want to explain, maybe I know XIQ probably popped in both of your heads or something along <laughs> those lines, how yeah. um, a company might come in with an idea and it might shift over time and, and what they're doing now. I think it might help to see a real example. Yeah, I, 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 we, we'll run with the XIQ example. That's a great example. And 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 first and foremost, I, I think you know, in in from the initial discussion in talking with XIQ, um, talking with uh, the founder Carlos, we you know we were immediately like, this guy is motivated and smart and open, and he's the kind of founder we want to work with first and foremost. But you know, they came in with a uh, um, uh, an ignition security keying system for golf carts. And we we're like, yeah, uh, maybe PGA Tour Golf, like, do, like maybe they can do that. But what we quickly found was um, our, our partner NASCAR, right, has these massive, massive venues, huge tracks, and not everyone's driving a race car at a NASCAR event. Some people are driving golf carts. A ton of people are driving golf carts to get around the track and to do all sorts of things. And they had this, um, you know, this big need to be able to uh, track their fleet of golf carts and secure them and everything. And, and it was just an amazing uh, kind of spin and then match with, with XIQ that it, it continues to, uh, to, go, to go really well. So that's one example. Jose, you got one in mind? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's, that's a good one. And, and um, uh, you know, be, beyond that, even with that same company, then you talked about all sorts of different fleet vehicles. Uh, there was application around, totally. you know, not, not just our, our direct partners here, but also like, um, or like our sports partners, but also like Comcast itself. There's, they have thousands and thousands of vehicles out there that uh, they had applicability to. And so all of a sudden there was a solution, not just for sports tech and, and those partners, but Comcast and, and that the large organization behind and, and resources behind them that were now um, potential customers for, for this company. And that's happened with, uh, with each of our, um, with each of our companies really. So for, um, for example, with, uh, let's say tip tap sports in, in, in the last cohort, there was discussions around, you know, they, they, they allow you to just tap and, and 
um, have a preset amount that you automatically um, process. So like a $5 payment. And I started out with donations and, and talking around that, that uh, way to engage people to give more towards charities. And then, you know, then there were applications into, let's say, a venue where you've got large, uh, long lines trying to buy the same product like a hot dog. And instead, you can just tap and move on and, and lower um, the amount of time you spend waiting in lines and increase the experience for uh, for fans to be able to get back to their seats and enjoy the, the show faster. So uh, we're always just thinking about ways to uh, not take what you have uh, and, and do more with it. Uh, and so it, it's a really fun and, and great relationship where uh, our interests are really aligned. We really want to see you uh, get more deals and, and uh, grow your company, which is what each company wants themselves. That's great. So and Natalie, sorry, before we move on, I don't want to get too far away from this. We, there was a question a few paragraphs ago um, about application tips. Can I can I go on that a, a, a course, little bit more? Um, you know, we Jose and I, we all look at a ton of applications and a ton of great applications. And I, Jose, first of all, I, I really agree with, uh, you know, what, to reiterate what you said about uh, understanding partner fit. I think is so important to making that really obvious and clear to us, knowing who the partners are, who we just talked about, and you know, having some vision of like, okay, here's how we could work with these guys um, is, is great. But it, it, on a more uh, functional sense, uh, technical sense with the application, um, there's a good amount of questions there uh, on the application and it asks for like a little intro video and everything. Don't let it jam you up too much, uh, get it done. Um, don't spend years uh, filling this out. Um, it's more important if you can get it done in the basic sense, convey to us the general fit, um, general value, uh, and that you understand us and you're interested in working with us um, and get it submitted so that we can see it, get really excited, and then set up a call with you and, and talk to you and, and make the connection more personal. Um, we don't want you to wait till the last second because you've been meticulously editing the editing this massive application um, and that ends up delaying the process. We'd much rather just get it in and talk to you. Um, also uh, on the same front um, with the video we ask for, we ask for like a one minute selfie video with your with your cell phone. Just do that. Just uh, talk to your camera for a second. Be a real person. You don't need a slickly produced video or anything. No. So there's there's some little tips to make our job of getting getting to yes with your application easier. Awesome. So we submit the application. Um, the next question is, what is the process afterwards that the selection? Yeah. So, so that process is, you know, me or Jose or any any one of our other awesome team members taking a look at it and and saying, huh, this is fairly compact and digestible. They understand us. They have a fit. They took a, they made a great video, and these guys seem super interesting. Uh, let's talk to them. So after after you submit your application, we'll take a look. Um, and then, you know, if we want to move forward, we'll, we'll get you on the phone for, you know, a 30 minute chat just to go over things, just talk about things, uh, fill in any details for you and, and see if there continues to be a, a, a fit. Um, after that, we move on to subsequent rounds of, of interviews with progressively more uh, members of, of the team of both your team and our team on the line. At some point in the interview process, we will, you know, be talking to our partners of, about you and about that fit. And we'll make sure that we start to get some buy-in from our partners and start to identify uh, a lead partner or two or three um, who will make sure that they are they are on the you know uh, the final interview call with you um, to really you know vouch for you and say yes like let's bring these guys in um, once that once once that happens and we're able to extend an invitation um, then we start an onboarding process where we really look at your business. And the, you know, and our structure, and and connect those, and make sure that we can do a deal together, and, and you know, get you working with us. Um, and then, you know, we look forward to to completing that process as early as possible, as smoothly as possible, so that we can um, get you as many resources, connections as we can, things that we can do outside of the confines of the program. Um, we're happy to. Um, and then, you know, really look forward to on the first day of the program, you having had the, had the, the time to get to know us, our partners, and have a million ideas of projects and you know, let our partners have a million ideas of, of ways we could, they, they could work with you and, and problems they see with your business and things they want to help out with. 
That's great, there Jeffrey. You and uh, you know, the one thing that I want to highlight there is, and I think the most interesting part to interested companies is that towards the end of the process, the final round interview includes the partners themselves, the partners that have said that they're uh, particularly interested in you. And that's important because during that process, you will be mutually working towards discovering how you could work together. And, uh, and again, that's because we don't want surprises. We don't want uh, a, a company to get in and say, you know, wait, who's interested in me? It's like, you, you will know up front um, at, at least a handful of partners who are interested in working with you. Uh, and we expect that number only to go get higher as you get to uh, get into the program and meet more partners and have further discussions. Um, but we don't want that to be a lower number. So um, during that process, uh, you, you will be interviewing with the decision makers uh, from these uh, different partners, right? So the head of NASCAR or, or PGA Tour, et cetera. Yeah, and Jose, I think just, you know, really driving that point home, we won't, there's, there's always going to be a partner interested in the company if you're accepted into the program. Um, but something you said there that always interests me is, again, you might you meet a partner, see a partner and realize the one you originally anticipated working with or that showed interest, you still absolutely will work with, but there's more opportunities within other organizations as well. Um, this year, we did take our teams to Texas. Um, and while we were there, we did um, a few partner events. So a NASCAR race at Circuits of the Americas, we did the Valero Texas Open, and then we did WWE. And um, I know on that trip, I heard a bunch of, you know, because we invited all the partners, and there was a lot of overlap. And people were saying, oh, wow, I realized I can do this. And, you know, while I'm here, and oh, look over here, my tech could plug into to this. So I think just being open to working with any type of partner um, is, is super important to this program. This and, and look, uh, Natalie, since you mentioned that trip uh, with our partners and everything, I, that was an incredible opportunity. And, and I think one of the most valuable part aspects of, of that trip was getting everyone together and going to uh, really important sporting events with our partners, but just going to any event and hanging out with them and just kind of being casual with them and not being in a formal meeting or, or webinar, but just being able to hang out with these executives and just kind of have off the cuff conversations was, was so incredibly valuable and was so, so insightful to how they think it was great. Yeah, I think having those face-to-face -face conversations with the partners and having that access where it's not just through email or through you know a sporadic meeting, it's it's really building relationships, and I think that's where we see a lot of the success come out of it. You know, you get to know the founders for who they are. You all will get to know the partners for who they are, and then you know dive into the organizations that way. But it definitely does bring a special aspect to the whole relationship. Um, so a question I think we always usually um, get asked as well too is, you know, how much do you really get from the program and the partners um, in general? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, just in that, for example, that event where uh, the teams flew to Texas uh, and got to see the, the, the background workings of, for example, the, the pit crews in, uh, in a NASCAR race or uh, a PGA Tour event, um, and in those discussions, speaking with our partners, uh, I believe there were, uh, and you know, you you might correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was like ten plus discussions uh, that, or ten plus deals and, and pilots and commercial deals that came from that event itself. Uh, you know, we've got ten companies uh, in, in the program, and um, I think it's over twenty uh, pilots and commercial deals that that took place during those twelve weeks of the program. Uh, and then since then, there's been you know, probably uh, as many uh, in, in just a few weeks since the program ended. Um, uh, the, um, the, the type and the type of relationships there that, that occur are usually, what we find is you, one partner will do a deal with you. Uh, it might be a pilot, it might be a, a larger opportunity. And then if, if you do your part of, of the bargain and, and execute well, uh, they get really excited about doing bigger things, but then they bring on some of their partners too. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, um, it has kind of a, a snowball effect uh, with, with your company. And what that means, though, is if you're in the middle of fundraising, or if you're in the middle of uh, other opportunities with other partners, you can point to the pilots and deals that you have with, uh, with our partners. Uh, and that's had significant impacts on valuation um, events as you're raising uh, on additional um, likelihood of closing opportunities with with your existing pipeline etc so uh i i think you you know the, the teams that are getting a lot out of this are the ones that are just focused and, and really trying to understand what the partners are needing and then they can 
identify um, how to how to solve those needs well. Uh, and really, there is no like upper ceiling as to what you can get out of this program. Awesome. Um, so let's let's talk. We applied. We filled out everything. Acceptance. So how many companies are accepted, or what you know does that percentage look like um, usually for us? Yeah, we accept uh, probably less than two percent of companies that apply from around the world. Uh, in the end, there are ten companies that uh, that end up joining the program, uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's quite a, quite a process to get from. Uh, for, from hundreds and hundreds of companies uh, to down to, to 10. And can you, um, either one of you explain if you get acceptance stuff, what does that process look like? How are you notified? Um, all of that. Yeah, so we will we'll notify you as, as soon as we can. Um, that's about as much as we can say because it's kind of a process of getting, um, we, we, you know, we take uh, feedback from all of our team members, all of our partners, um, and really weigh everything. Uh, we aim to um, we aim to build cohorts of companies of, of ten companies who uh, you know don't compete directly. Like you're not going to be competing directly in the, on the exact same thing, but who can work together and, and support each other in like real cohorts. Um, and so we put that together. Uh, you'll be notified um, via email, and uh, and we'll probably get on a call with you uh, you know as soon as we possibly can uh, just to go over those next steps. Um, once you're accepted, we will be connecting you with with our our, our legal department um, to go uh, talk about the structure of the deal um, and how your business is structured. And you know, we from the very beginning we do a dive into how you're structured and what your cap table looks like and everything. And how can we how can we work with you on this and uh, and understand you know your future goals and objectives and how the company is set up and and you know, do a deal together to continue to support you. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and from there, we, you know, continue to get more and more team members in, involved. Um, at, at a certain point, uh, we will be connecting you with our program team. who will talk to you a lot more about the program and, and the logistics, and then we'll look forward to seeing you in, in February for the program. That's great. So let's talk about the importance of, um, you know, we get the question all the time, can I apply as a solo founder? Do I need to have a team? Um, you know, what does that look like? So Jose, can you tell us the answer to that? You know, can I be a solo founder or do I need to have a team? And then can you just talk about the importance of having a solid team for a startup? Absolutely. Um, you know, we the, the answer to that, I think uh, at the beginning of, of, of this uh, session, we talked about um, what, what we're looking for are uh, for you to make the case that you have the right team to execute on your vision, right? So sometimes a solo founder might make that uh, argument very um, persuasively. And uh, what we find though is it's okay to be a solo founder as long as you've built a team around you, right? So you've got, you, you, you might be CEO and perhaps the other people on your team are employees or contractors or something like that. Um, and again, if you make the, the case for it and you can show us what you've done up until now uh, already with the team and the resources you have, then, you know, we can, that can, that can be something we can uh, move forward with. Um, so, but we, we kind of look to you to make that argument. Um, and so, again, it doesn't matter if you're solo or have a full team, you know, if the, if the other people around you, they can be called founders, they can be employees, et cetera. There's, it doesn't really matter to us. What, what matters is that you have the people on board to execute on your vision. Awesome, I appreciate that. Jeffrey, do you want to chime in there at all about the importance of a team? <laughs> nope, that was that was great. Uh, you know, thanks, Jose. Awesome. So the elephant in the room question um, that we always get, and either one of you can take this, but um, can we discuss the benefits versus equity and what that looks like? I know that is one of our most common questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we um, we think we've got a great program here with with great partners and um, and there's there's so many great things. And, and so right up front, we we take up to twelve percent common stock equity. Um, that's the that's the upper limit on on stock, uh, and specifically it's common stock. Um, so we don't take uh, seats on your board. We don't have a liquidation preference, and we really do what we can to to set ourselves up to be, you know, true partners with you in the the long term 
real success of the business. We don't want to sprinkle around investments and be able to get out easily um, and, and move around. Um, uh, we really want to be family and, 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 and work with you to be successful. In exchange, you get to go through the program. You get the, the mentoring, the classes, workshops, lectures, connections with our partners, um, both during the program and, and for the long term. Um, and we really feel like that is, is extraordinarily valuable for well, a, a well-qualified team that is in the stage where they can actually really use um, the, the connections and the, the program and everything. Um, and we do our best to, to qualify those companies. And that's, the, that's why we have this whole big um, interview process. Uh, in, in addition, we uh, have a whole bunch of perks um, it's like something like $1.7 million uh, uh, worth of perks, um, AWS credits, cloud compute credits, um, a whole big thing. Uh, Jose has a, a, a great database of all of our perks and will be there for you to consult with uh, to get the most out of it. Um, and, and then, you know, additionally, inter, uh, as a, a little bit of spending cash, so you can pay for plane tickets and, and a marketing budget and uh, maybe Airbnbs if you got to go travel or whatever it is. We give you a small amount of cash, $50,000 um, to pay for expenses uh, during the program. Um, and so those are those are a couple of the key benefits of what you get. Uh, what, what else am I missing? There? There's so many great things, right? Yeah, I, th I think the, the main the main thing there is. Um... You know, this isn't just uh, rubbing elbows or shoulders, whatever you say, with uh, with our partners, with you know NBC Sports or Sky Sports. This isn't just like, hey, let's have a few sessions. Uh, they're here to get stuff done. They're here to get business done and deals done. Uh, so if you come in here and and you leave the program without deals, uh, that's that's a loss for for both of us, right? That's not what you want. That's not what we want. Uh, we want every company coming in here to get as many uh, pilots and commercial deals off the ground as possible. Um, and so. Again, like it's it's the expectation to be one of our partners, uh, and it's the expectation to be able to join the program. And so we we spend a lot of time scrutinizing um, where you are as a company and where you're going, um, and how that fits into the goals of our partners. Uh, and so I think th that really is uh, one of the primary benefits of this program. Again, both the time and effort it takes to get in, but then once you're in, um, the fact that you are, you know, we're in the same boat together. We're aligned as far as interests go to to get deals done. Yeah, and I, if I can even elaborate on that, Jose, I think, you know, once you're in, you're in is a, is a strong statement because it's not just the 12 weeks. Um, yes, that that as of now is the program and everything, but, you know, we stick by our alumni. We continue continue our support. We continue to help you build these relationships. So, yes, we say we're a 12-week accelerator program, but it's so much more than that. You know, we all become somewhat of a family and and you know, whatever we can do to continue your growth, even outside of the program, we will. And I think that in itself is one of the best benefits um, and one of my favorite parts of the job because you get to continue building those relationships and then watching these companies flourish from what they started and then to, you know, what they come out of the program to do. And, and we call on our alumni a lot and, you know, our next webinar, you'll hear directly from some of them and their experiences. So, um, once you're in, you're in is, is more true than um, I think we can even begin to explain. Awesome. Well, if no one else has any questions, I think we've covered the basics of everything here and we can wrap up. Um, Jose and Jeffrey, I want to thank you again for joining me today. Um, sure yeah, of course. If anyone has any questions for you all, um, how would you like them to contact you? Um, you can contact us via email, um, the, the contact us form on the site, um, or, I mean, the, you know, really the best way is to apply and, and reach out to us that way um, and get in touch. Um, we are, as kind of a last, a, a final statement here, um, we, we really value, you know, the friends and family aspect and, and really bringing in great founders and and, and being really, really close with people. So if you're thinking about applying, if you think you have an idea and you're not sure if it fits, like get in touch with us, get an application in and, uh, and, and let's, let's talk about it and talk about possibilities. Additionally, um, we, we have companies that have been in our database for, for years, for multiple years who we've been talking to and you've been waiting for the right time. To, to, that when they can join us and actually get you know the best benefit, and so we are all about starting relationships as early as possible, 
and uh, and finding that 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 right time to to work together. Um, yeah. All right, Jose. Do you want to add any last thoughts? No, we look forward to uh, to learning more about you guys, and um, yeah, it's an ex exciting process, and uh, yeah, lo looking forward to learning about you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in, Jeffrey, Jose. I appreciate it as always. Everyone have a great rest of their day. Good thing. All right. Talk soon.